I want to talk about motor control, a couple of short videos. What I want to start with is reminding you of the stimulus response pathway and how motor integration um, and then output fits into the stimulus response pathway. So this diagram you've seen before and I've drawn out versions of it as well. Um, and we're going to be looking and we already have looked at quite a bit of this somatic nervous system here. So this is controlling skeletal muscles. What I want to do here is talk in this little series of videos, talk a little bit about the integration that occurs within the central nervous system via interneurons that then would result in a motor output via this somatic nervous system to the skeletal muscles. So we've looked at the somatic motor division going from the spinal cord. So this last neuron here would be in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. But in order for that neuron to be stimulated, other than a simple reflex, requires integration within the brain itself. Um, so the most simple example of somatic motor stimulation would be like the knee jerk reflex. But typically your motor pathways are more complex than that. There's processing in the prefrontal cortex based on memories, emotions that um, allow for the appropriate motor response. And no one fully understands this, but, and we're not gonna go into detail on what is understood fully either. But I wanna give you a little bit of kind of the voluntary as in conscious decision-making um, in terms of our ability to control our muscles beyond the, those reflexes that would occur. Um, yeah. So this first video is just kind of an overview of this. Um, this diagram is kind of what the, some of the brain reasons we'll talk about. We've got in the cortex itself, the cerebral cortex, we've got the premotor cortex and the primary motor cortex. These are both gonna be, typically it's, it's thought of the premotor cortex is where a, this is part of the kind of the frontal lobe, a decision to make a movement would be made and send this to the primary motor cortex. The primary motor cortex can influence low, lower motor neurons directly. We'll talk about what that means in a moment. Other motor neurons that are lower down in the spinal cord. Um, it can also influence, be influenced by the basal nuclei. Remember those, um, which also talk to the cerebellum that you know are involved in motor movement, um, motor control. The cerebellum influences the primary motor cortex, et cetera. There's other pathways here as well. So these are kind of just the players that are involved in performing a movement. We're not going to go into tons of detail on all of them, but we're going to use some of them again, and you already have seen some of them. So the first one I actually want to talk about briefly is the primary motor cortex, um, which again receives information from both the premotor cortex, um, the cerebellum, as well as the basal nuclei to, to some extent. So the primary motor cortex is actually where we can um, control different regions of our body. So this is what's called a homunculus, where a little man or woman, it's a man here, um, is represented in our cortex. Over here, this is the motor area. Sensory, we're not dealing with yet. The same thing exists in the sensory cortex. Um, that's what's shown on the right side. What's shown here is this would be the um, cortical region where the primary motor cortex is located. So this would be the precentral gyrus. And in that location, I'm sorry, I think I just saw that. Yeah, um, yep, I said that right. <laughs> in that region, we've got different areas of the cortex devoted to controlling different areas of the body. So that is shown here um, by the actual body shown here. So for example, your hand, first of all, takes up a whole lot of cortex, right? There's a lot of brain power going to tell your hand to move. 
And that makes sense. There's smaller motor units. So it's gonna take more input and to allow for precise control, playing the piano, stuff like that, versus the um, other regions where it is like the hip or knee where there's less cortex devoted to controlling that body region. We don't really need the precision. We just need on or off. Face, you'll, you also can see how much cortex is devoted to the face. So that's the first place I wanna start. And we're gonna look at how the cortex controls the lower motor neurons. So I'm actually gonna draw that in here. We've got neurons up here in the cortex, right? That's gray matter. Those are gonna travel down to other neurons. So this is going to be our upper motor neuron. And it's going to talk to a neuron that potentially goes out to skeletal muscle. This is our lower motor neuron. And I'm gonna draw a few pathways for you that use this terminology 